fucking hemoglobin, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hemoglobin. Yeah. Yeah, fucking uh, off screen, we uh, had a conversation about the whole rationality rules thing that uh, Piper was not actually aware of. Yeah. But after, like, just giving a brief description of the situation, like, we kind of immediately were picking, like, little holes in it. What? It's actually kind of fun. Let oh, me. Sorry. I ask you something. What what is this guy's like politics, like in general? This rationality rules person. Like, what's his pol so, political leanings or whatever? Uh, I'm actually not sure of that, but uh, from the looks of it, right. it seems like he wasn't like an anti SJW or anything. Right. At least not particularly. Right. But, I mean, it was kind of, you know, I, I really didn't hear about him before this whole fucking transphobia shit, which, like, yeah, yeah. I it, mean, it this really is fucking ridiculous. I mean, yeah. it, it, not only did he not, like, do any, like, in-depth research into it, it actually got, it, it's got to a point where even Cult of Dusty is like, dude, fucking, if you did the basic amount of research, you'd see why you're wrong. Apparently Cult of Dusty has, like, a redemption arc going or some shit. Apparently he's, like, uh, uh apparently, I guess, like, the stupid, like, anti-SJWs or whatever, like, he got tired of them and is, like, now, I don't know. Uh, well, he got tired of them a couple of years ago, back when yeah. Trump got elected, where he's, like, yeah, alright, not a... None of you care about your fucking principles. You care. You care more about shitting on uh, quote unquote SJWs and feminists than you do. But it seems like he's kind of uh, drifted. Not. I, I don't want to say drifted left, but like his social politics aren't like the shit that they used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember he made, like, a point a lot. Like, he said something that I really liked once, which is, like, kind of scary for me because, like, that he said, like, also, like, the most vile shit in the past. Um, but, like, he said something like, um, you know, these atheists you know, are more worried about, like, the SJWs, and they are worried about, like, homophobic Christian politicians getting in power. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cult of dust. Yeah, that's surprisingly, true. Surprisingly, you are very correct about this uh, particular issue. Well, it's because we live in the Twilight Zone. Yeah, I suppose. By the way, what's up, Kevin? Oh. Hello there, everybody. How are we all? Hello. Uh... Good, I filled in Piper on the whole rationality rules thing that I've just kind of been watching because I've been binging Essence of Thought at work. I also caught up on uh, your Descent of Manosphere series while I was at work. Oh, well, did you enjoy it? Oh, uh, oh there's some kind of it. static in your mic, Piper. Oh, I wonder if these are the uh, mic issues she was talking about earlier. Hello? I'm... Hello? Hello? Yep, you're coming in now. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah, it was just like this weird fucking buzz for like... That was the same what, issue. like that 20 same, seconds? That was the same issue I was having before. Probably the... Uh, it's probably the... Uh, what do you call it? Probably the fact that like my headphones are essentially my mic now. So I should I I should I'm, probably just plug in my microphone. That it might be a good idea. I, I'm thinking about getting. I, I actually fucking I gotta save up for a computer. I've been broke for so long, but I'm getting better at managing what I have. Yeah. Since I kind of, since I finally sat down, did some maths, so not to trigger the Brits, I called it maths. 
Correct. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I did some uh, maths and kind of uh, came to the uh, figured out how much I need to have in my bank account at the end of every, or it like how much of my check I need to have set aside in my check each week. It's not like I've been buying a lot, but uh, yeah, I really need to get a fucking like at least a laptop. So I can get you a know, laptop, and I'm gonna get a uh, I get a microphone. Um, how do I sound now? You sound better now. Okay, cool. But yeah, Kev, you actually had a essence of thought. Oh yes, I can yeah. get a link, Kevin. You actually had essence Thank of you. thought on. Uh, yeah, yeah, you actually had them on to talk about the whole rationality rule situation, which... Uh, this, this is a you may... Oh, sorry. This is a stupid question, but is it essence of thought or essence of thought? Like, is it a, is it that joke thought. or is it thought? No, it's not the joke. It's like Okay, okay. The Just wanted to make sure. No, no. I'm, I'm yeah, the I'll joke the on YouTube. Cool. Yeah, My whole channel's a fucking joke. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I talked over you, Kevin. Fucking Americans. Who do we think we are? Descended from the Brits? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, we'll, we'll have to come back and reclaim our land eventually, but for now, we're going to let you have the independence. Hey, I mean, really, it's stolen land from the uh, from indigenous Americans. Exactly, but we stole it first. So, I mean, well, here, here's a, here's an actual factual thing about that actual factual. Um, the uh, the American Revolution was actually a counter revolution of sorts because uh, the British Empire was imposing limits on both slavery and the expansion of settlements um, to the west. Um, and so that's really the reason why the, uh, the Americans wanted independence because they wanted to be able to continue to take land from natives and, uh, so even, the, the slave trade. So, oh yeah, it wasn't even like most Americans, but it was very, it was very specifically like, uh, the upper class Americans. Oh well, yeah, all the... All the founding fathers were, you know, uh, s slave owners, essentially. That was their whole deal. So. Hey, uh, Kristen, could you put the link in the Hangouts chat so I can see? Oh, yeah, I got to I, I, I gotta get on that. Uh, God, yeah. I, I, maybe I got to calm down on smoking the weed a bit. <laughs> legal in my state so I can talk about it nice I'm not breaking the law how many states is it legal in now it depends on uh, whether if you're talking medical use or recreational use I think it so in 2016 it became eight states with uh, California and Massachusetts joining up uh, for recreational also, use yeah I think also New York uh joined recreational use but i haven't been uh keeping up that much on the legislatures because it seems like a lot of uh it, it seems like a lot of proposed like decriminalization bills have actually been like it have just completely been shut down mm -hmm. hell uh actually now that i think about it it's probably more because Every state in New England, except for New Hampshire, you know, the one where it's live free or die is their slogan. It's on their fucking license plates. Yeah. But it's fucking illegal to smoke weed, even though they were the first state to propose a bill to decriminal or not to like to legalize it recreationally, which That's got shut weird. down by a Republican senator. Or the uh, Republican, not a. Not a senator, or not a federal senator, a state senator. Like, not in federal Congress, but in the states 
cinematography. Yeah, I'd have fucking. Yeah, I know, Kevin. American politics is fucking confusing. No, I know. I'm, well, I'm vaguely aware of how federalism works. It's fine. I get it. There are two tiers of nonsense. It, it, that's what it is. It is fucking nonsense. Uh, God damn it, I keep forgetting to put it in the fucking Hangouts chat. Uh, well, I, I went to it. I can give it to Kevin if Kevin wants me to, but I'm at the link now. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in the oh, Hangouts I'll put it chat. On, uh, Facebook. Oh, there we go. It's in the Hangouts chat now. There, you, there mm -hmm. we go. Got your wish, Kev. Thank I you. guess that was a request and not a wish. Whatever. I've... It is a wish, and my wish has come true. <laughs> you said come. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know why I made that. Yeah. I wonder, uh, I wonder just how much you know about the rationality rules situations because based their situation because basically all I've seen on it has been essence of thought. Like, but I've seen a lot of uh, our friends on Facebook, like uh, Steve Shives, talking about it. And didn't Aaron yeah, Ron apparently go to a fucking bar with him? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, I do. I, I, I've talked to Aaron about it, and it's um, not Aaron, and um, oh. yeah, he uh, saw duplicitous in a way because he was saying, "Oh, we didn't." Um, he hadn't seen the video. Yeah, when he went on the um, what the fuck is that show called? The really horrible transphobic dude. Um, Rationality. Non sequitur. Show. No, oh, the non non sequitur show. Yeah, he was saying like, I mean, "Oh, what well, the ACA should." It doesn't narrow it down to say. It doesn't narrow it down to say transphobe. I'm like, well, that that could be literally like a million people on the fucking internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. But I was just trying to sort of jog my own memory. Um, yeah, the non sequitur dude, and um, Aaron Aaron Ra said that um, the ACA shouldn't have called him transphobic. Um, even though he hadn't seen the video, so how could he possibly make that judgment? That's kind of disappointing because, um, what do you call it? I liked Aaron, Aaron Raw's like stuff against creationists. I thought it was interesting, and also like he yeah, seemed he seemed better than like the typical new atheist because he's given his support for feminism and yeah. he's well, he stated that he's, you know against capitalism so i thought he was relatively i thought he was interesting um so it's kind of shitty that he's like i don't know going to bat for this person or whatever the hell but well he's yeah to be fair to be fair to him he is better than your average new atheist there's no doubt about it yeah um, but i mean i love that fucking bar with tj and sam harris fucking pulling it down well like well, Go ahead. And I was just going to say, I don't think he's, um, I don't think him, like, as you say, going to bat for this dude was like coming from a place of him being transphobic. He's just like, uh, atheism needs to be united, sort of thing. And him not uh, wanting to, like, alienate people. So it's sort of, yeah. I don't know. It's not, it's not from a place of hatred. Like, I don't think he's actually transphobic or anything, but he's just. I don't know, he's just like a privileged cis white dude, you know? Well, that's how he yeah, rolls. I suppose. I guess that's kind of the problem with, like, atheism as a, I don't know, as a goal or a movement. Like, I don't really, I think that, got, I mean, maybe people disagree with me, but I think, I've, I got, like, I, I was really into that when I was, like, a teenager, but I've really, I've kind of soured on that. Like, I don't, ultimately see the point of like an atheist movement given that you can not believe in god but have the worst possible um worldviews 
like that you can think of. I mean, you know, you can be a fascist and not believe in God, or you can be a uh, transphobe and not be believe in God or, or whatever. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's one of the things for me that kind of illustrates why I don't really care about like uh, the atheist quote -unquote movement anymore. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. Like I don't, specifically the reason I don't do atheist content is because I don't want to be lumped in with these fucking people. And it's so yeah. strange because like in real life, the atheists I've met have been really nice people. But you sure. can go online and just these people are fucking disgraceful <laughs> and really just yeah. appalling. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it, if I don't know if it's because the internet does something to people or it just allows the inherent shittiness of people to come to the fore or whatever. But yeah, I mean, look, it's almost to the point where, you know, the old argument about. And I think this is sort of dumb in many respects, but I think there might be some truth to it, the more I say. The old religious argument of, oh, well, without religion, I, you know, atheists are just going to act like pricks because there's no ultimate thing. They're, the atheists online are kind of proving that to be yeah, exactly. true. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because they're just like these fucking nasty, bigoted pieces oh, of shit. I, feel like they, um, I think they'd still be nasty, bigoted pieces of shit if they had religion. I mean, definitely, but... That's the problem, yeah. They've, th these people are atheists, and that's fair enough. Um, but essentially, they've come from like a religious mind frame, but they've just dropped the god, but they've kept all the bigotry. Yeah, essentially. I mean, I like to me, it seems like... To me, it seems like, I guess, the reason that they're all like that is that... Um, it's not like, you know, it's not 2007 anymore or whatever. So it's not necessarily going to garner views for you to attack some random creationist you find online with bad YouTube videos and be like, look, this person um, is an idiot. Um, especially since, like, so few people are creationists. I mean, they're definitely... Like rat, like not radical, but extremist Christians in this country, well, in the United States at least. But um, especially since like society is getting generally more secular, like you know, uh, most like most of the people I know definitely are pretty a religious. Um, so like since that's not really a hot button issue anymore necessarily, and since the hot button issues have become about. Um, you know, I guess the culture war between conservative white people and marginalized people that are trying to um, get some kind of visibility and participation in society. Um, they've kind of latched on to that to adapt. And the way that they've approached it, instead of doing what you might think they do, what they would do, being rational and skeptical, and, you know, joining on the side of marginalized people and saying, you know, look, these uh, these conservative white people, I guess, are like, you know, shitty neocons, Christian neocons that um, just want to promote, like, you know, um, hatred and the things that make them powerful, which is kind of what the atheists on YouTube used to do. Like, they used to be against, um, they used to be really against, like, Christian homophobia. Even the Amazing Atheist was. Um, but instead of doing that, for some reason, they've decided that they need to, um, they, they've decided, there's a really bad echo. Sorry, uh, how yeah, sorry, I fixed that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, for some reason, they've decided that they need to um, try to argue that, like, the same kind of bigotry that people like Ben Shapiro are pushing, people that they have no, like, ideological, well, you know, at least uh, you would expect them to have no ideological uh, commonality with, they, they have they've decided that they have to argue on the side of those people, and that they have to argue on the side of uh, bigotry and, like, you know, against feminism and for the status quo, which is really strange to me because the status quo, at least in the United States, is very, very much based on um, Christian values. Um, so, you know, 
but these atheists, quote unquote, militant atheists, now all of their content is about, um, you know, thwacking people who want to challenge the status quo and arguing, like, I guess the Jordan Peterson argument that everything's fine, you don't need to change anything. But I don't know. Why the well, fuck it's are you over the preventing yourself from whack? That's delightful. What'd you say? Sorry, you're both talking over each other. Yeah, shut up, Rose. I know it's your channel, but shut up. What's <laughs> up, y'all? My, my name's been changed on Facebook for like, what, three months at this point, at least? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna make more videos more often. Oh, I changed my name a while back. I'm not, it's not Rose, it's Kristen. Yeah, why'd you do oh, that? Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. I do apologize. I didn't. Um... Well, Chris, I was going to ask you. Oh, no, I'm not that. mad. I was just letting you know. Oh, no, that, that's cool. Uh, okay. Oh, so you're the one that contacted me. Oh, okay. Uh, my bad. I yeah. didn't realize. I didn't recognize the name. Oh, you thought that was a different person. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't even know who this person is, but like, we seem to have talked before. So, <laughs> okay. Cool. That's funny. That. Okay, now that's okay so I'll, I'll say that again then. Shut up, Kristen. I know it's your channel, but shut up. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, no, I was just going to say... First. Yeah, the... Um, oh, shit, the yeah, fucking the, nerds the, are just watching the, this video. No fair, sir. How come nobody ever watches my videos? Who is watching this video? The surf. The surf. I don't know what that is. They're a newcoming bread tuber. Uh, yeah, I don't pay attention to bread tube, so sorry to whoever that is. Yeah, I honestly I gotta stop watching. Oh, I'm sorry. Else. I'm sorry. I really interrupted Kevin Logan there. I just saw that and had a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, well, the surfs are awesome, and they. Uh, I mean, just yeah, yeah. Anyway. Just so go and check those people out. They're delicious Canadians. Anyways. Also, um, also I'm doing a live stream with Kevin Logan. Are we? What? Now we are. Not now, but like me sometime. Hey, you are doing what you oh, are doing. Well, you're technically a in a live stream together, so. Yeah. We, we've all had a live stream with Kevin Logan. How? All of us more than once. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am very much a live stream slot. This is true. We gotta make libertarian <laughs> socialists again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Thanks, Kevin. You're just as tasty. See, Kevin, you're apparently as tasty as poutine. It makes sense. I don't know what poutine yeah. is. I guess oh, I'm stupid. Fries, I, I mean... Really, I can't get. I I don't know any more about them other than uh, poutine. Or it was before I was a uh, vegetarian that I that I tried it. But uh, poutine is basically like kind of French fries covered in gravy and oh, stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Anyway, anyway Kevin, what were you? Like... Yeah. Yeah, the point I was going to make about it half an hour ago before Kristen interrupted how dare you uh, yeah. was that um, the, uh, it isn't just so much that the atheists are like um, not pwning the Christians anymore or whatever which I, I don't know, whatever look it's played out as shit anyway it's I would the agree they're now like signal boosting them like they're now like oh George yeah. Peterson's fucking awesome when they <laughs> yeah. know how he isn't in any respect yeah. So no, yeah, that's, that's true. A bigger problem. Yeah, that's true. I agree. I mean, like these people's, uh, these their worldview is um, pretty much identical to people like Ben Shapiro, who like like these be like amazing atheist type people are supposed to be at least like rational atheist liberals, but their worldview is essentially identical to uh, someone like Ben Shapiro, who's literally. 
Um, I think he's like, you know, he's very, I think he's Jewish, very religious, uh, neoconservative. Um, so, yeah. you know. Who do you think is worse, Ben Shapiro or Tucker Carlson? Um, I don't really know that much about Tucker Car Car Carlson because I don't really, like, I make it a point not to watch Fox News. Like, I actually ended up watching it by accident. Yep like, a month or two ago, and I, like, literally couldn't stop giving my TV the middle finger, but, yeah. um, well, that's, but, that's, like, I guess, yeah. I've seen, I've only seen a little bit of Ben Shapiro's content, but the stuff that I have seen is just, like, my god, is he a fucking, like, just, not only is he an idiot, but he's, like, a stuck-up idiot who thinks, like, I, like, he literally is, is, his official channel is literally responsible for the Ben Shapiro destroys SJW like joke. Like his his channel like titled videos like that like on purpose. Oh yeah, he even got wrecked by the some conservative in, in Britain. Kevin knows a lot about that. Yeah, I saw that was uh, yeah. pretty funny. Who's better? Yeah, a guy called Andrew Neil. Who's better, Kevin? Who Lowe? used to? Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say yeah, that was a guy called Andrew Neil. He used to publish. He used to be the editor of a really right-wing newspaper called The Telegraph. Well, I say really right-wing. It was not like fascist, just like very conservative. I'm familiar with that and, paper. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and Ben Shapiro was like, "You must be a leftist, basically." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And made himself look really foolish because he like sort of stormed out of the interview, which was fun. Yo, Kevin yeah. Logan, what do you think about Kevin Carson? Who is Kevin Carson? He's the guy who is the anarchist or adjectives are four mutualists and he works at the Center for Faithless Society. He I don't know like, enough about... We did a good job on mutualism, so like, I think we mentioned some of his concepts. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, look, we discussed, didn't we? We discussed mutualism. Um, that's fine in its own way, um, but I don't know the person. I haven't read their work. So oh, okay. At least he's better than. Opinion. At least he's better than Proudhon because Proudhon was a massive sexist. I, uh, yeah, I but I mean, if you go, I, I don't want to be all like, oh, well, that was in the past, but it's sort of true. Like, if you well, go far enough, you'd be surprised actually, because number one, Bakunin, who was. I don't know if he was exactly a contemporary of Proudhon, but he was not long after Proudhon at the very least. And he actually was completely against Proudhon's views that women should stay in the house. He thought that women should be a part of the revolution. Um, and then, a lot of them were, well, the other thing I, 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 let me just finish and then you can, but um, the other thing about that is that, who, someone who definitely was a contemporary of Proudhon, uh, Joseph de, de, de Jacques, I don't, I can't pronounce uh, fucking French names, but um, de Jacques, he actually wrote a letter to Proudhon um, basically dressing him down for his misogyny. And coined um, coin the term libertarian in a political sense. And with yeah. the and calm. Yeah, yeah, but my, my point wasn't everyone was sexist, but if you look back, a lot of the people who were, like, absolutely crucial in terms of development of philosophy were either, like, um, sexist or anti-Semitic or maybe a bit racist or more, like, um, pro-Empire or some dumb shit. So it's not like... I mean... The fact that it was a sexist isn't cool, obviously, but... Um, but you need to put it into its historical perspective. That's to true to some degree, but I don't know that that's really an issue about these people existing in times past, because if you look at thinkers that are really popular today, I mean, they have their problematic aspects. Maybe they're not, like, anti-Semitic or overtly misogynist, but they still have some really bad opinions. Um, so I, mean, I, I think that's... Opinions. I think that's more a function of the fact that, like, even the people who make strides in uh, certain schools of thought, ha like, are very much capable of having very disagreeable um, evaluations of things. 
Do you want to see Piper debate? Why don't you debate Sean P. Wilbur? I bet he'll wreck you. Sean P. Wilbur? Yes, he does the Libertarian. Oh, era. yeah, that guy. Yeah, I've actually debated, well, not debated. I've got into arguments with him on Facebook before. He's kind of, uh, he's very touchy about certain subjects, but um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't really see the point in debating him. I mean, we're not really, like, you know, I mean, he does his thing, I do mine. I mean, I don't really have a, an egregious problem with him or anything. He's pretty bright, though. Brighter than Kevin Carson. I mean, he, he, he has... He has translated um, all of, I'm pretty sure all of uh, Joseph Dejock's uh, work that's on the Anarchist Library, so I appreciate that because that's what enabled me to read his stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, also, uh, you know, since Ben Shapiro was brought up earlier, oh my God, that man reminds me so much of just like, I, I, I mean, just to let me nerd out for a second, it, may, it he really reminds me of like a cowardly cobalt who literally their main power in like Dungeons and Dragons, if you play them, is that they can grovel to give everybody else an advantage to hit them. <laughs> like, that's such a geek. It, it, hey. I mean, <laughs> it's really like. Oh my god. One of my favorite things with Ben Shapiro was fucking when the, when he was on, uh, what was it, Dr. Oz, and that woman went, put her hand on his shoulder and said, like, at, because he kept intentionally misgendering her and was. Uh, I remember that. On with his, yeah, and then said, if you keep that up, you'll be going home in an ambulance. And he was like, he got all like, uh, like he, he kind of like, like, uh, I don't know what the word for it is. He, he kind of like cramped up and was like, oh, that's not very appropriate for a, a, a civil conversation. Uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guess what po political party I joined? What political party did you join? Party. Actually, no, no, actually, no, <laughs> actually, I joined the, the Libertarian Socialist Caucus. Yeah, Socialist Caucus of, of the Libertarian the, Party, I know. Which is the only, which is also going to talk to Kevin about, and it's the only left wing caucus in the whole party. I mean, it is the Libertarian Party. Not the party that had like Gary Johnson as president. Of <laughs> yes, that is the same party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, well, actually, I applied as forty. Uh, this guy named Vermin Supreme. That guy's hilarious. Oh, Vermin Supreme. Supreme yeah. Vermin Supreme has been like a meme for like uh, the last like the last two election cycles, basically. Yeah, but no, he's also an anarchist. Like, I get that you want to reclaim the term, but. The Libertarian Party is fucking disgusting. Man. Yeah, I would agree with Kevin, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I know, okay, I'm not saying you're part of that. Like, you're, obviously, you've joined the left wing bit of it or whatever. But I still wouldn't feel like comfortable giving them. Well, I've I've actually like read uh, some of the, like I've I was in like a Facebook group for it, and I read their like manifesto or whatever for the Libertarian Socialist Caucus of the Libertarian Party. And their whole thing is, well, you know, so uh, we're going to make the Libertarian Party into a Libertarian Socialist organization. So we're going to make it into a proper anti-capitalist, anarchist organization that opposes, well, that opposes capitalism and that, um, you know, flat, you know, is uh, centered around uh, class struggle, I guess. Uh, but they, I don't, like... I see a big problem with that and the fact that, one, it's the Libertarian Party. It's dominated by people who go to bat for austerity and yeah. uh, the complete deregulation of capitalism so it has more power over labor. Um, so there's that. And then there's also the fact that it's a political party. I mean, the only its only point is to... Um, 
try to get uh, their presidential candidate elected or try to get, um, you know, maybe people in uh, municipal positions of government or into Congress or something. Uh, and that's, from an anarchist point of view, that's pretty much uh, useless and counterproductive because whoever you get, whoever you elect to power is going to end up uh, carrying out the same functions that every other capitalist politician does because you're electing someone to be a capitalist politician. You're electing someone to administrate the capitalist state and the capitalist state's functions are to uh, make sure that uh, capital can keep exploiting labor. So, like, I'm, I think this whole, like, libertarian socialist caucus in the libertarian party, I mean, it was bad enough when DSA did it, but this is just, like, I don't, I don't even get that part. Like, I don't, I don't even get this one. Like, it doesn't make sense when the DSA did it, and it doesn't make sense, it definitely doesn't make sense here, at least in my opinion. That's my opinion, but. All right, something really funny, so, uh, yeah, and so the serfs have, uh, said some things in the chat, but uh, because I think uh, we brought up that they're uh, Canadian. I recently found out that uh, or I recently found out that my dad's side of the family is in fact French Canadian. So like, I, I always wanted to like, really like, you know, I, I never thought I was like, Canadian. I knew I was French. Euthanasia would be in order then, probably. Uh, you know, I've always joked, but uh, I found this out actually because my girlfriend's French Canadian. And. Uh, oh, God. You must say you're not the French. Disgusting. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Oh, and she, she also she doesn't even speak the language. Actually, no, she speaks. Uh, she's bilingual. She speaks both. Uh, she, she grew up being taught English, but also learns, uh, like, uh, her grandmother's Quebecois accent, like, her accent and, uh, her, her, her specific, or not accent, dialect of, uh, French growing up, and she speaks both, like, perfectly, fluently. I wish I could speak Spanish fluently and English. Well, I speak English, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so she knows a lot about uh, French-Canadian history that I didn't even know because uh, a lot of the French-Canadian uh, communities in Massachusetts were uh, victims of uh, what's called, quote-unquote, urban renewal, which is basically when fucking eminent domain comes in kicks a bunch of people out and then uh, basically tears down the whole tears down the neighborhoods and repurposes the land for something else. And they did that Nothing to uh, some random geek has joined us. Hello some random geek. But they did that to all the little Canada's in uh, New England. Uh, not just Massachusetts, but Massachusetts is where I live, so of course it's like where I have the most knowledge, but yeah. Uh, so apparently, so I didn't know I was French Canadian because like no one on like, well, my dad's French side of the family isn't even fucking like, we don't know any of them. My, it, my dad fucking, both of his parents were dead by the time he was 10. And uh, the only side of his family that I've met is the Italian side. Where oh, the other side, the other side. Oh. Oh. Just a nation. <laughs> it's a thing. Oh, anyway, some random geeks. Part, I'm also, words, I'm also Irish. Irish. The best part is I'm also Irish and Scottish. Hello. Me too. Irish. So Yo, I'm, I'm a lesser. Brit. I'm a lesser Britain, or a lesser Brit. <laughs> no, Irish people yeah. are lesser Brits. We're Irish. Scottish are. are we got to kick out the English, though. Like, we need Irish Scottish unity. Thank you very much. I'm just joking. Of course. Yeah, but... Yeah, but, uh... It, it was a very interesting thing to find out because she had... She's like, <laughs> did your... Fa like... 
Yeah, it, but we basically, like, she asked, I can't remember all the questions she asked me, but, uh, like, one of them was, like, oh, like, did your dad, like, what time, like, did your dad's side of the family come over to America? And, uh, the answer was that I didn't know, but I knew it was at least quite a few generations back. Putting the timeline into the uh, migration or got it, uh, the emigration of French communities into Canada, for the most part. So Canada, at least yeah, at least for the most part, yeah. I'm a dirty fucking Canadian, apparently. Yeah, damn Canadians. Canadians. My pure Italian, Irish, uh, Scottish blood. Pure. No. There's nothing no, pure about I mean, me. Was... There's just nothing pure about me, honestly. It's just all a mixture of like different whiteness. <laughs> No, most most there. most white people you're fi you'll find are mutts unless like they like lived in their country of origin uh, and then came to the United States. Like usually they'll be mutts. Yeah, that's kind of the. But that's the thing. What, what I always find really fascinating about white nationalism. <laughs> such an American. Especially thing. in America, because, not, because it's like. It's like well, none of the only thing are pure ethnic people in America, right? Whereas in in Europe, the white people fucking hate each other. There's no uni unity amongst white people in Europe. I mean, we've spent centuries slaughtering each other. The way there's that no, no, the idea of an ethno state in Europe is fucking ludicrous. The way that um, whiteness in general works in that sense is. Um, by taking the different nationalities that are today considered white and acting as if they constitute one common community, even though it's comprised uh, of all of these different nationalities, uh, different Nordic nationalities, Irish, Scottish, British, um italian. Et cetera, italian yes and then there's, Which then there's kind of funny and then there's the conflict between northern and southern southern italians um so you know oh, yeah. the, it, that's yeah, kind I of the I way that... the point i was a point i'm essentially yeah, making yeah. that's that's kind of the way that whiteness works it takes um you know so-called so white people are um like a collectivity that doesn't really, really constitute a collectivity. It's just a bunch of random uh, nationalities that um, are being treated as a part of some fictitious whole by the ideology of whiteness, let's say. So yeah, sorry, yeah, Kristen, you can go. In Britain, and the immigration people have been on about like, oh, the Poles, the Polish people <laughs> into Britain. And they couldn't get much more white than the Poles, really. And yet everyone's like, nah, fuck off. These white people are invading us. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I don't... To be fair, white people are invading the U.S., but or have well, invaded the U.S. But they already yeah, invaded a 300-year-old problem. Yeah. That's, that's been around a while, man. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's not the way white nationalists think an invasion happens, like, White national white nationalists full on endorse invasions made by who they consider to be white. But like any form of immigration they consider to be somehow a real invasion. You know? And people of ethnicities that uh would have lived in area like you know, there are definitely I can imagine just considering, like, what the land was there, or, like, what the cultural, like, makeup is, that just looking at uh, Texas, for example, there's probably, when Texas was, was uh, be, or became 
independent <laughs> from and then or independent from Mexico and later joined America, there were probably families that were suddenly American citizens who had family in Mexico. Like Oh yeah, and then they lot and then the land was taken away from them and we didn't even honor the treaty of a of a Guadalupe Hidalgo. Oh no. Yeah, that's the thing is that white people are always or like you know, this hegemonic idea of uh, whiteness which I mean really it was kind of to it, it was very much to prop up the kind of it, it, it very much was meant to like prop up the system that we had in America which is like a system that's built on like the domination it, it's built on class domination and well, we're all cool national right here um, yeah. I, I do know so. sorry I definitely would not say that I'm not white. I wouldn't say that I'm a person of color. I would say that definitely I'm white. But at the same time, I'd say I don't identify with whiteness because what the fuck even is whiteness? Exactly. Like, you know. It's a scourge like that I, needs to be driven from Earth. That's what it is. is it it needs to be eradicated. Mm -hmm. Also, whiteness doesn't have a culture. Like, white cultures really yeah. stole from other cultures. Um, what do you what do you call it? I do know that um, in Europe, actually, uh, specifically in Germany, um, people look down on Greeks because uh, since Greece has been so indebted to specifically Germany um, as a result of the economic crisis. Uh, that's why Syriza ended up coming to power. But um, because of that, you know, people in specifically Germany have this bigotry against Greek people. They think like Greek people, it's essentially similar to how white people in America a lot of the time view Latino people. They view Greek, you know, Germans view Greeks tend, tend to view Greeks as uh, like lazy and not fulfilling of their obligations. So you know, um, and I get the impression that uh, a lot of Europe tends to look down on, in a similar way, look down on uh, nationalities that are part of countries that um, you know are kind of enslaved by debt to other more powerful no countries like Germany. Kevin can correct me yeah. on that if you know anything about that. But. No, then you're quite right. There's, there's, there's a real nasty bigotry, which sort of is under the surface, never really fully articulated, but it's essentially Northern and Central European countries mm -hmm. that you know, are quite rich, and Scandinavia yeah. and that, mm -hmm. look down on places like Italy and Greece, because A, they're a little bit brown, a little bit, little bit brown and quite yeah. poor. Right. Yeah, that's what I suspected. Yeah, I mean, my dad, who uh, very much, my dad, who very much is like, he's Italian and he's French, just because, like, so this is a really funny thing where, like, so, so like, a, a proof that whiteness that. is like, so proof that whiteness is like really fucking like arbitrary. Is the fact that my father has literally been stopped because he looks kind of brown. I mean, my father's Sicilian, like, and he has the skin that, like, like he has the skin that kind of shows that he's Italian. But they thought he was a Muslim, and they stopped him at an airport. Or they stopped him at an airport and like strip searched him. Mm. Is he a Muslim? Mm. No, he's not. Mm. Actually, mm. really ironic. Mm. My dad or my dad voted for Trump. Mm. Yeah, dick. But yeah, you know, my dad being yeah, I, I mean, my dad is a dick. But like, besides that, just the point. I, I think it's a really funny story because. You know, 
these white people are like, or these white nationalists are say are trying to like decide who the hell is white, and even nationalities <laughs> that like in America they agree are white. Like America's agreed for like almost a century now that fucking Italians or it, that Italians and Irish people are white. Yet fucking because an Italian person might look a bit brown, go look at them and then be like, and think that they're like Middle Eastern or because again, it's just arbitrary. It, it's not an actual sensical like categorization of anything. Yeah, neither is Latino, because that can be an umbrella of all sorts of different cool races and sub-ethnicities or ethnicities. Is it an ethnicity? Yeah, a lot of Latino people are actually considered white, especially yeah. if you get into the con, like the specific context of their specific countries and their relations between, um, you know, uh, populations. Like you know the the relations between like indigenous populations and then everybody else in those countries. So and also those yeah, countries themselves also had the, black or also had black this slavery. This was, so. A lot of the radicalism in South America has been about with the likes of uh, the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela and Evo Morales and various right. other people. Is well, that people of people of color i mean the white nationalists would see all of them as like not white or whatever but those who are considered white oh, in those countries being like landed gentry basically like rich aristocratic pricks and eventually people have gone no we don't this is fucked up you're you're this is not fair you know yeah back. yeah i mean yeah a lot of that had to do especially in bolivia with the concerns that indigenous people had over essentially being exploited by capitalism and unfortunately and this highlights the kind of limits of just having you know left-wing uh, people who are purportedly left-wing be elected to a capitalist government and then try to implement uh, change. Um, unfortunately, a lot like th those concerns of indigenous people essentially went unheard. I mean, uh, Morales continued the uh, development um, and you know exploitation of res uh, into indigenous uh, territory and resource you know exploiting resources in that territory and the indigenous population has gotten quite sick of him as a result of that so i have a question i know that it's bad anarch traditionally bad anarchist not anarchist practice you went for for like obviously capitalist like governments but at the same time like we only have like 12 years to stop the worst of climate change. So, like, what are we supposed to do when the revolution is not going to be in like ten years, twelve years, even? Put it I, I don't know about the time frame you're using. I think it's probably true that if there isn't a significant change within at least the next fifteen years, then things that are irreversible are going to start coming over the horizon. But, um. I don't know. I mean, I guess my response is, well, number one, electoral politics, at least in my opinion, maybe people here disagree with me, but electoral politics isn't going to accomplish anything on the, uh, on the issue of climate change. Um, I mean, it just, I don't like, you know, I mean, what's driving climate change is, uh, the fundamental uh, mode of production, let's say, uh, the fact that capitalism is based on transforming natural resources into more and more commodities. That's not going to change despite, you know, who you get into power. So if you get like the if you get Jill Stein into power, um, you know, she's or Howie Hopkins or whoever. You get whoever into power. If you get so, let's say Jill Stein's the president of the United States, right? Uh, the, United, the United States government is based on 
getting tax revenue from the capital accumulated by um by the companies that are doing all the ecologically destructive things okay yeah. so no. jill stein is essentially put in a position where if she wants to keep her livelihood and keep the institution that supports her livelihood afloat she's gonna have to make those companies happy um so really nice. you've missed i think you fundamentally missed the point we okay. need to get Rand paul into office okay. and then <laughs> free the market up and then yeah. the market will solve everything. Yeah. And the free market will fix austerity and then eventually we'll have a non aggression principle utopia where um you know the age of exactly. the age of consent doesn't exist and <laughs> We have private mercenaries that function as police forces, and you know, it'd be great. They're not police because they know healthcare, really. I mean, uh, look, who, yeah. who actually you know. needs healthcare? Come on. I mean, uh, well, healthcare is good, but. Yeah, it's no healthcare. Huh? It's a good thing I'm drinking because we're talking politics. It's a good thing I'm already uninsured. I mean, you know, if you think that healthcare is a right. Uh, then you that means you want to enslave it's doctors. Far, right? it's trash, it? That means you that no, 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 hold on, hold on. If you if you make doctors, if you make doctors give people health care, that's enslaving them. Okay. So you're enslaving them, making them give you stuff. Like, come on. Exactly. And Ben Ben Shapiro you know, knows his know. wife's a, a nurse. I don't know if you ever mentioned that, but he's fucking. You know what's really funny about that argument? Like, it's just. It, it's so easy that all you have to bring up is, like, literally. If, if you believe in free education, like, on top of that, in, like, like, that education. Like, the ability to learn something like medicine, you make it so that that's not something you have to pour like a quarter million at least into it, it you'll probably you'll probably end up with more doctors because more people that want to be doctors will actually be able to become fucking doctors mm -hmm. because they'll do you know what's, be do you know what's also understand. funny about that argument do you know what's also funny about that argument is is that it's fucking really really dumb and the libertarian right libertarians are fucking clowns. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, what should, should we keep a system where fucking people aren't going to the doctor because they can't afford to? Such as my situation at the moment, where I, like, where the, I need all this, like... What? Uh, Fundamentally, I don't like, think America could call itself civilized particularly on the basis that when you get ill you have to decide whether you can afford to go to the hospital mm. that's sickening you're yep. the richest yeah. nation that has ever existed ever anywhere but what, let me tell you what we don't have we don't have the enslavement of doctors okay <laughs> or the enslavement of college we have, we, have, we have voluntary transactions on the free market Okay, so that makes that makes dying of cancer okay. Okay, that's what you don't understand. No, but I, to be fair, we don't have a free market. IOC is going to literal government privileges and capitalist privileges at every corner of the market. Oh yeah, there's always uh, that. Yeah, but when when right. when Chairman Ocasio Cortez comes into power and solves everything with a communist utopia, everything will be fine. Yeah. No, no, just like Bourbon Supreme, and we get free ponies, and then everything will be fine. I hear free ponies. Uh, part of me got excited. Hey. Didn't he? Didn't he also say that like brushing your teeth would be mandatory or something? Yeah, <laughs> but he's still being Hitler though. But how? Okay. When the, in the when the communists take over, they're going to take all the toothbrushes. So how's that going to work? They don't. Yeah, they're going to redistribute it. They're going to redistribute the toothbrushes to everyone. We're going to take your toothbrushes and give it back to the needy. <laughs> Who the fuck oh, is yeah. tap dancing? What is going on there? Well, that might be me moving my chair, sorry. 
I think someone complained about it in the chat before. I'll try to yeah. keep still. No problem. Okay. No, it's fine. Look, yeah. I don't. But just like, if you're gonna move, so mute, mute, mute yourself or something. It sounds it's like you're falling down the stairs or something. I can sit still for a little bit. It's not that big a deal. How to be political while still maintaining your critique of cool politics? The ultimate tension. <laughs> <laughs> so I what I love about the vegan anarchist is you've got a nice sense of framing in terms of like your face on the camera, like you you just poke out the, like the bottom of the screen or something. It's beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're all matching now. I mean, I'm not showing my face, so that's fair. I, I'm not either, partially because I. <laughs> Not exactly fully clothed because my room's in a fucking attic. Or in an attic. I said attic. What the fuck? Uh, but yeah. Your room, your room, room has a problem? Oh yeah. The problem is, is that it's 90 fucking degrees outside and I have no AC. Yeah, but right, don't worry. Okay. For you Brits. You get for, right, okay, for anyone not in Americana land, I'm using Fahrenheit. I'll translate that to Celsius. It's, like it's 30, almost 30, 30 It's almost 30. Yeah, it's almost 30 degrees outside. Well, you should move somewhere colder. I, I live in New fucking England. Yeah, New England. New England is supposed to be pretty cold. Yeah, but <laughs> U.S. standards. Old England. You should move uh, to Old England. That's just nice and temperate. We, we have pretty much the same weather patterns. You, I mean, you I, do not. I like, live. You, you have massive snow drifts and shit. We get like maybe an inch of snow a year. Oh, that's, oh, that's Seattle. I say, I, but I mean, temperature-wise, it's not all that different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, I, I will say I mean, we get massive we get massive snow because we're uh, I'm gonna blame it on America's hat Can I, uh, Canada. Canada. It, it's all really fine, but they can blame it, it on the homosexuals because the, the Christians told. Okay, them that here's the that here's something weather. here's something weird. For some reason, I thought some random geek was in Canada. I don't know why. I'm close. No, I'm so living in Washington State, so it's like yeah, I'm. I'm that not, is close. That is pretty That's close. That's basically also, Canada. To be fair, yeah, you're it is. You're Canada. <laughs> Wait, what part, what part of uh, Washington do you live in? Like, uh, I, live I, I live in the suburb of Seattle. So it's like it's not near the border. Uh, not that close to like I'm basically actually closer to Washington, Vancouver, Washington than I am to Vancouver, BC. Yeah, there you're in Vancouver, Washington. I was going to say you're probably. Uh, I don't. You're probably a little bit closer to the Canadian border than I am, but even then, going through Vermont is not that long of a drive. You know, if you, True, if, you were to set up, if you were to set up a drive to Canada from like where I live, it would probably be about three hours. I think for me, it would be true. But going through Vermont, don't you have to pay all of Bernie Sanders's evil communism taxes? All those tolls, yeah. Totals. Apparently, uh, but I think actually, I, depending on the boat ride, I may it be faster for me to go to Seattle and then just get a ferry to like um, uh, Victoria, because yes, in Seattle we travel by boat. For me, it would just for me, I just right next to Mexico. So oh yeah, there's that. But yeah, actually, like uh, weather lies, I think like Seattle will be like much closer to England. However, I bet it'll happen again this summer. Our tempered rainforest will catch on fire again. Tempered rainforest catching on fire, and I bet there's going to be ash fall in Seattle again this summer. No, Wait, no, no global warming here to fire. speak of. Oh yeah. Hey, just think of it as warm snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, it's it's very warm. It's very abrasive snow that just like dusts onto uh, your clothing, and just like my God, is sometimes I should not jog out there because I'm afraid it's going to clog my pores. This, this is why there's an East Coast West Coast rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> what about the south? Oh god, I feel like we're gonna we're not going two pack and biggie, are we? Is uh, who's getting shot? I'll take the bullet. No, I'm gonna side with the the Pacific coasters. 
Okay. West Coast, best coast. Actually, what's funny? What's funny is that when it comes to rap music, I actually prefer like the West Coast. Okay, here's the thing. I'm a hit. I'm I'm into hip hop, but like I never. The, I never investigated which artists are from where. Like, the only thing I know is that the beef existed and the media made a big thing out of it. So, like, when people talk to me and it's like, yeah, I like East Coast hip-hop better than West Coast hip-hop, or East Coast hip-hop is trash. I'm like, well, maybe. I don't fucking know. I don't know where the artists I'm, I like are from. God, like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I've been listening to ska music. Nice. Well, weirdly enough, you been... was actually born in Maryland, at, or uh, he was born on the East Coast, but is known as a West Coast rapper because that was where he made his career. And do you, um, did you know that Kid Kid Rock was not actually born in any of the states that were in the Confederacy? So he really should. I really, I really. See, you shouldn't bring up Kid Rock around me because I like new metal, and like Kid Rock is like the re- is one of the reasons why people hate new metal. Mm, yeah. Well, I like I love I was a big fan of Kid Rock back in the day. You were a big what? Metal I liked chat. new metal back in the day. I went to see Limp Biscuit at, at Wembley in London. And well, Limp Biscuit is the other that. reason why people hate new metal. <laughs> And I just stood at the back and got really, really drunk. Yeah, yeah Limp Biscuit um, concerts are pretty universally weird and cringy. Limp Biscuit is just kind of weird and cringy in general. <laughs> all yeah. those backup dancers that are all look like Fred Durst. That's just like it's. Yeah, for some it. reason, for some cool reason, there. Fred Durst thinks that like chicks dressed like him is like hot. I don't know why he thinks that, but you know he thinks that. Because so. he loves himself. Yeah. There's no way that guy can jerk off. Yeah, I've like okay. I've, I've looked okay. I don't like him, but I've looked at or I've seen interviews with him, and it doesn't strike me. I mean, maybe he was probably back in the day when he was really famous and was like rubbing shoulders with Britney Spears and shit. Back in the day, he was probably like very full of himself. But the interviews of I've seen of him like more lately, he doesn't seem that full of himself. He seems like a guy who was like, yeah, I just make shitty fucking rap metal and. For some reason, I got super famous, and yeah, I'm here now. Exactly. He just he just keeps he just keeps going. He just keeps rolling, 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 rolling. They're, well, their newest album is named uh, is like it's named after poop, I think, which is I guess after, it's called Golden Cobra, and I think that is a name for poop. Um. So, and which is like that's a, that's a. That's appropriate because the band's like name, Limp Biscuit, is a euphemism for flaccid penis. So yeah, they also did like mm-hmm. chocolate starfish with and hot dog flavor water too. So yeah, yeah, they yeah, that's true. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about full trunk? Uh, I hate it. Why? It's awesome. Um, I what think it's to me. To me, it's pop punk, uh, but acoustic, and that doesn't sound very good. Ooh. Yep, it's weird, and there's a lot of anarchist folk punk. Um, I guess, but there's like choking victim and like what? What do you call it? What's the other one? Choking victim. I forget the other one. Like the other ska crust punk band that's anarchist, but like they're anarchist, and I don't like them either. <laughs> I'm talking about folk punk. It's not punk. Yeah, what playlist do you listen for folk punk on Spotify? I don't. I didn't listen to playlists. I just listened to like specific groups, like Andrew Jackson, Jihad. Oh, okay. Or like Against Me, and I hate Against Me so much. What about the Scatolites? I've never heard of that. They're a classic ska band. Mm. They're from Jamaica. Here's the thing. Listen to to, listen to actual ska music. Don't listen to ska punk. Ska punk is like the whitest, shittiest music on the face of the planet. If you like ska music, there's a channel I'm subscribed to on YouTube called the Ska Tune Network, which is like he does covers of pop songs. But oh yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, something new. Yeah, I like to listen to that stuff. 
So what about Two Tone? I don't know them or whoever that is. It's a genre. It's second wave ska. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Any, I don't know anything about ska. The only ska I know is ska punk, and that sucks. So. <laughs> ska punk is awesome. What are you talking about? Uh, ska punk is pretty bad. Ska <laughs> punk was like proto pop punk, to be honest. <laughs> But like, no, okay, the biggest one of the biggest bands in ska punk was No Effects, and No Effects was very bad. Mm. No Effects is a good band. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're pretty bad. Everybody, I'm gonna. It's quite late now, so I'm gonna go to bed. Right, okay, you. good night, Kevin. Later, thank Kevin. Thank you for inviting me and chatting and all of that jazz. And um, I will see you later. Have a good night. What about Rancid? Are you just going to keep rattling these off? Does Rancid suck? Oh, Rancid? Rancid's okay, I guess. I'm not really into them. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I don't listen to a lot of music anymore, and I just now listen to my uh, um, podcasts and like live streams and like sometimes audiobooks. Oh, yeah. I can't... I can't... Like, there's never been... Like... I've never, I don't think there's been a point in my life where I've been able to go without music. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much dependent on it at this point. I wonder if, if Chris still like ska punk or ska music in general. I. Kristen is like a core kid. So he, I mean, he I like am. But I, grew, but I grew up on like ska. Uh, and like, I do listen to quite a bit of. Uh, I do listen to quite a bit of reggae. Yeah. I had a reggae phase once, but that didn't last very long. I did have my. I did have the. Time I never had I was... a reggae phase. I just always kind of like. It, it's just uh, like I grew up around a pretty diverse taste in music. But oh, Kevin Lee. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, he was pretty. Kevin had a good night. So yeah, he did a second night. Yeah, and, understandable. Yeah, for me, it's just like uh, I did have my period where I worked at a gas station, so I listened to a lot of the uh, rock stations and stuff like that, which is a station I probably wouldn't listen to now because I'm feminist now. But like, or at least the radio shows themselves. But the music itself, I would listen to, and like I had that like metal period as well. And some of that music I still listen to, like In Flames and like uh, Soil Work and uh, Trivium. But yeah, that's me. I really gotta start getting into metal. I, mean, I just don't know where to look. But I mean, um, right now, you have to find. Say, Sorry, Kristen. Um, I, I, go ahead. I, I, so you brought up that uh, yeah, I'm kind of a core kid. Yeah. I, I would say that's definitely the phase of my life that I'm in is that I am in that music phase, and it's yeah. slowly been dying out. And that I've been listening to like just. It's not even like I have like a specific taste anymore. It's just kind of like I, I listen to like weird, just it, it like it's kind of turned into like I listen to like Phil Oaks and Evan Greer like most of the time these Phil days. Phil Oaks is awesome. Love me, I'm a liberal. It's a classic. Take down, take down. Oh second my God, I mean, I also let I mean. I mean, I also listen to, uh, I also listen to like Bad Wolves and like Body Count and. Yeah. Body Count seems cool from what I've heard of them. I just don't know about their discography very much though, except for that one song. Body Count is like a new metal band where the vocalist is Ice Cube, not Ice Cube, Ice, ice T. Cube. Why did I say Ice Cube? Anyway, the vocalist is Ice T. He's like an old gangster rapper. Um, also, Nacker. Yeah, Nacker. Well, so is Cube, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But, um, like, uh, yeah, I mean, the music, I mean, I'm not really into it, but it's interesting. Like, it's basically like gangster rap, new metal fusion, which is kind of interesting. I mean, I like. Gangster rap and new metal, but you know. Well, there's also uh, as bad as this gangster rap combined with punk rock. Which band? It, the consoles head PE. It's they have oh, like, weird letters. They're not letters. really gangster rap. I mean, there's hip hop <laughs> influence, but like, yeah, they're basically like what's called rap core. Oh, like, and that oh, that yeah. means 
rapcore is like it's hip hop. It's similar to new metal in that new metal and there's a lot of overlap. New metal is essentially hip hop elements combined with metal, whereas rapcore is that but combining it with punk rather than metal. Um, and yeah, head P or rapcore, I do not like them at all. They are very weird and bad, but you know that's yeah. my opinion. They're good. The singer, the the fucking their their music is fucking like from a from a like problematic quote unquote standpoint. Their music is super bad. Like the guy, Very. the guy is really misogynist, really homophobic. Just like I can kind of tell just by that one song. Um, which song? Bitch, if, if it's too loud, bitch, get the fuck out. That song. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they have plenty of songs like that. They also have weird, like, Illuminati conspiracy theories and shit. It's weird. What about Cottonmouth Gangs, whatever they're called? Oh, you know Cottonmouth Gangs. Cottonmouth Gangs, yeah. Okay, I mean, you brought up the Illuminati conspiracy theories. Something I find really funny, so... Uh, uh, there's a lot of people who will say Tupac was killed by the Illuminati. Yeah. But what's funny is that Tupac himself very much mocked the idea of the Illuminati conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Like, he himself, or he himself with the Illuminati, K I L L, yeah, uh, joked that uh, where that came from was he was talking about. Killing the Illuminati conspiracy theory. Isn't it like that it was, like, the- that's really that's really weird because kill Illuminati is used by like a bunch of rappers who actually believe in the Illuminati. Yeah, that's the funny thing because like Tupac himself very much mocked the idea, like mocked the uh, conspiracy theory. If the Illuminati actually exists. Why don't they send me the invitation? Seriously, the, if they really exist in this guy, like, yeah, I really want to join them. Because they seem awesome, but too bad it's all fake. Mm-hmm. It, it's just... I, I work with, like, a lot of guys who believe in that conspiracy theory, and I just kind of, like, nod my head and... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like it's not. Po- it, there's no point of like having that kind of discussion. I, My- I already had a discussion with the guy who says that like the moon landing was fake, and it's just like, oh man. Oh, I work yeah. with one of those too. Well, okay, My, one of my dad's friends is a flat earther. Yeah, <laughs> and he, I've actually had like an hour long argument at like four in the morning with him about flat Earth. It was really uh, interesting. I've known a nine living truth in my life. Well, my grandfather and my uncle, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, are both really big nine eleven truthers. It's really weird. They're not. Neither of them are into really any other conspiracy theories. But um, like my grandfather's, for like years, has believed that like the government took down the twin towers or something. I, I used to, I, like, inherently enough, I used to believe that one myself. There are right. people who believe that there are no planes that hit the Twin Towers. That is epic. Yeah, it really you can't is. help uh, feel beans. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's like there's no planes that hit the Twin Towers in the first place, bruh. Check me. <laughs> Oh yes, I'm the strangest. Uh, yeah, there's actually there's like a really rich guy, and I think he's done a lot to uh, bankroll the truther movement. And I'm pretty sure he believes that like literally, like the planes going into the towers was like that's not real footage. It was doctored to make it oh, look like planes were going into the towers. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have a professor who talks about them in his class about conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. And now there's so many recently. There's almost <laughs> like a new one each year. Yeah, there's also the Sandy Hook conspiracy theory, but don't See, those, those are the ones that don't interest me. I'm interested more in like 
specifically like the alien conspiracy theory oh, where yeah. people where people think that like alien like the government knows about aliens and they're like collaborating with aliens to t- create our uh, current technology. Oh, like that, oh, that yeah. the, those are the ones that because those are like interesting at least. Like they're like I want to. They're so out there that I really want to know like what makes them tick from a political perspective. But like the Illuminati stuff or the truth or stuff, like that's very easy to understand. Um, yeah, yeah. Once you once you kind of understand where that stuff comes from, I mean, anti-Semitism. I mean, well, understanding where it yes, from because part of it. Because when I was in high school, I actually went through a time where I believed the Illuminati existed, and I stopped listening. And so part of how I like very. It's actually kind of funny because how I became like a core kid mm-hmm. is that like I stopped listening to a lot of the hip hop I listened to before because I was convinced that all of them were like part of the Illuminati. <laughs> That's funny. And what's funny is that learning later on about the like, like kind of learning later on and like understanding where it came from was what kind of made me realize wait a minute this is like fucking stupid mm, yeah you, you know what our history word came from just to let the audience know and for a refresher hyper for what came from where what the, the word illuminati illuminati oh well, okay, so there was an actual group named the called the Illuminati. It was a group that was rebelling against the monarchy in Bavaria. They were ultimately crushed out. Um, but that created like a trend among the ruling classes of society to view really any kind of revolt against their authority as a conspiracy of um, like a of people trying to overthrow them. Um, and so, like, the ruling class has historically, since then, actually had a lot of anxiety over that, um, over, like, being overthrown by a cabal conspiracy. Um, and so, I mean, essentially, the Illuminati conspiracy theory, it's really, I mean, people call it the Marxism of fools, and I think that's a little bit pretentious, um, but it's... I mean, I would say it's correct in that uh, the reason people think that there is some shadow government running society is because, I mean, regular people don't have control over society. Um, You know, they don't have control over whether they will have a job next week necessarily. They don't have control over whether necessarily they'll be arrested or killed by the police if you're a certain type of you know if you're like a person of color in this country uh you don't have control over um the volatile nature of the global economy you don't have control over um you know i mean you don't you don't even have control over the work that you do or the management of your own community so um from that it's very easy to explain this lack of control by saying, well, you know, there's a secret shadowy life. Yeah, there's a secret shadowy group that controls everything. And if we just got rid of the secret shadowy group, we'd be fine. Um, That's a lot that's a lot that's a lot easier than trying to understand um, the actual social relations that create this lack of control and this alienation. Um, oh, yes. so well, yeah, because then you'd also, so I mean, you have to make yeah. that, you, you have to make those, like, you, you kind of have to fit those pieces together to realize it's not some kind of secret cabal, but much rather, like, it, it's actually a quite visible thing in our society, like, visible institutions are well, doing everything that's the institutions themselves yes are visible but their real nature is concealed by a lot of things yes, their nature it's, is. it's concealed by not only the ideology that is uh forced down people's throats from the time that they're born but it's yeah. also concealed by the operation of these institutions so for instance if you take the the market 
the capitalist economy. That presents itself as just a series of individual exchanges. You know, my boss, my boss needs, um, you know, uh, labor and I need gainful employment. So it's only natural that I go to work for my boss. Um, That's your so, choice that you made there. Exactly. So it actually presents itself um, as something other than it is. You don't people when they're when they when they, for instance, you know, sign up to take a job to get you know employment. Um, they don't necessarily view that as. I am going to go to work because I have no other choice because I have no control over the process of social production. Um, they, you know, in 99.999% of the, you know, time, they view it as, well, you know, I need gainful employment. My boss needs labor. So, you know, this is natural. This is something that just is how the world works. Yeah, I'm noticing really talking to people about their new life, but they often say that, that they often think exactly like that. It's very frustrating to get past that. <sighs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I was going to say that that's like something I find like generally to be because what that was kind of the point that I was trying to make is that the institutions are like it's quite visible, but like the at like what they're doing is kind of concealed by the way that like by the way that uh, well the way that discourse is kind of framed and how capitalism frames, like, or how capitalism frames itself. Hey, capitalism gave you this great opportunity for this job. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, I work with a guy who keeps telling me that the only way I'll be able to get by at work is if I, uh, instead of seeing it as uh, not having a choice and working if, if someone actually said like i someone actually said oh you sound like you want to be a hippie out in the woods it's like uh that, uh, that's someone said that to me I'm too saying. yeah it, it, that is not at all what i'm saying because i, I still I wouldn't be able to be lazy yeah i heard yeah, that well, before it's yeah kind of a, it's kind of interest. Oh, you shouldn't look at it as you're being exploited. You should look at it as you're getting overtime and you're getting paid double time and a half. You're making more money, and it's like uh, that's it's like sure there there are labor laws that mean that I get paid a bit more if I go over forty hours that I get overtime pay, but like that doesn't like. Not if you're salary, right, though. That, that that doesn't make yeah. That doesn't make it so that my uh, job isn't exploiting me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's interesting to me how the ideology is so effective that just suggesting that people shouldn't be coerced into. Um, nine to five jobs that take up the majority of their time, the majority of their life, um, just to, to just to make. Life. Well, it's in, not, in, it's in some, some cases, study. in some That's cases, yeah, yeah. In many cases, it is. So, the, just like you know, argue, just simply suggesting that that shouldn't be the reality. That you shouldn't be forced into. Um, a job that takes up most of your time that you hate um, just to skate by, uh, that people respond to that with uh, saying that that's utopian and impossible and calling people hippies or whatever. It, I think that's an illustration of how efficient the ideology itself is. So oh, how do you yes. challenge it? Like, how do I day-to-day -day challenge it? Uh, well, for me, uh, whenever someone says, hey, Jonathan, how are you doing? I go, I'm, think I'm still thinking about how to bring about the socialist, communist, workers' revolution. And that sometimes does start conversations. That's like, uh, it, it's one way. Yeah, it's, some were uh, recepted. 
though. So there's a bit that, and uh, but uh, like sometimes they kind of get into like interesting discussions about like I just hate how the, uh, I don't hate the idea of like paying the pe- these lazy people to just like sit in ass and do nothing. And I say, well, why not? And then I, tr- but yeah, I have conversations. Usually doesn't go where anywhere, but that's kind of how I do that. Try to put the ideas out there, which is very tiring sometimes. So yeah, yeah. very. Yeah. uh, I found that when it comes to like people being receptive to like anti capitalist, anti colonialist kind of like ideas, I I found that I get much farther with uh, my coworkers who are uh, undocumented immigrants, even more so than uh, a lot of the guys that I work with are uh, Puerto Rican or Dominican but grew up like in massachusetts like they're less susceptible to it than like the guys i work with who grew up in guatemala mexico uh dominican the dominican republic grew up in south america so like anyone in south and central america i thought like because they didn't grow up in the U.S., they tend to uh, be a bit more receptive to it and kind of understand where I'm coming from when I bring up, like, imperialism and talk about, like, the stuff the U.S. does that it doesn't really tell its people. Because a lot of them have lived in a place where they saw that happen. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um... You know, I've had conversations with, like, friends who are, like, completely apolitical and remain so to this day. But when I've said, like, you know, when I've described, like, you know, what uh, an anarchist communist society would be like, they've said things like, oh, well, that actually sounds uh, great. That sounds way better than um, how things are now. Uh, So, you know, I think... That gives me some hope, even though that person is not going to become politicized. Like, you know, those people are still, they, they don't really pay attention to politics either way. But uh, but it's, it's still encouraging to me that there's a natural openness to those kinds of ideas, at least on the part of some people. I think I, think I find it that, like, it's, it's, so for some people, it's easier to, like, you point out the problems, they will be more receptive to like agree that there are problems. They, they right. in my experience, sometimes they're like they're they will have questions and try to figure out how anarchist society will work, like who will build the roads, which I think from now on I'm gonna say, well, how will you build the roads if, or how would you suggest the roads be built if we're in an anarchist society? Because that's kind of like either it's like the experts that like to do the, the decision or if people have ideas suggestions they can contribute those ideas suggestions and they can be agreed upon democratically and so that's but i always get the questions like do anarchists build the roads which is like do you think the roads are just going to disappear so yeah there's always that yeah i mean like uh what do you call it I, like I think uh, the reason that people are more inclined to agree when you point out the problems is that the problems are pretty obvious. Like, true, yeah, you know, it's pretty obvious in an era where the global system is disintegrating what the problems are. Um, but you know, still, when you propose a solution, once again, the um, the you know the that disintegrating system has still conditioned people to think that you know this is the way things are and it's never going to change so you know it's it's so that for that reason it's much harder for people to accept any possible solutions than to agree that yes the problems exist that's why the really tired and dried out argument of well capitalism isn't perfect but it's the best we have is always repeated. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean, when I say that they're receptive, like usually, mm-hmm. I, like usually, if I'm able to point out like the cause of the problems, and I, I've actually like I've had people like ask me more about like anarchism, like as a result of 
having these conversations. Yeah. Well, that's good. Just, my dad keeps telling me that activism is pointless and I shouldn't even do anything except work. At least my dad won't say that to me, but then again, my dad also thought that Sweden is socialist, and so... <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my dad doesn't like whenever I try to change the world because I, cause, uh, cause he tells me nothing's ever going to change. Mm -hmm. um, my father is weird because he has, like... He has this, like very critical attitude towards the way things are like he basically like he actually makes the argument over and over again that who, who is the who sits in office doesn't matter at all because ultimately the american political machine is dominated by money and big business so he makes that argument all the time but then when it comes to like you know like can you know so why don't you actually do something to change it. I mean, you know, he just kind of says, well, that's not, that's nothing's going to change. It's going to be the same way forever. It's never going to change. It's impossible to change it. Why even try? Um, so it seems that he's more like content to just complain about it um, rather than actually do anything. Because once again, it's easier to recognize that there are monumental problems than to um, really buy into any solutions. Yeah, but my dad thinks that capitalism is great because it made him better off than it was in Mexico. I mean, Mexico is a capitalist society. Yeah. So I, don't know. I, I don't know how that. I'm actually arguing with someone from does school that actually said that Mexico was a socialist country. I'm like, what? That's a really weird argument. Okay, I can understand the confusion with like Sweden being a socialist country. I disagree, of course, but it's just like, how is Mexico a socialist country? Like, I yeah, mean, I don't know. Ever confusing Venezuela with Mexico? Yeah, I don't I don't really get it. Like Mexico is the country where like NAFTA like NAFTA was imposed on Mexico and that was like an extreme trade deal that enforced like massive privatization and market well, reforms. Piper, so I don't understand bad, how that's bad socialism. Equals so bad, e bad equals socialism and good equals oh, yeah. capitalism. I forgot, um, yeah. Or that's why all those people are crossing our border, coming to our country because they're running away from socialism, or they're running away from all the violent regimes that we put in place because we didn't want socialism in all those countries. The thing I find interesting is that like people say like yeah people are running away from like socialism or whatever, but then like those same people are like no those people have to go. So you're saying that like those people have to go back to the socialist. Uh, you know, horror show that they're trying to escape. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, because we were here first. It's almost like it isn't socialism that they're uh -huh. running from. Uh -huh. It's almost like they're running from American imperialism. Yeah. Oh, and also, t and my dad asked a Walmart employee if she's happy with her job, and and she, and she says she loves her job. And I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck does people love to work at Walmart? There are people who love to work where I work, and I'm just like, I I'm the same way. I'm like, why? Here's the thing. What? Here's the thing. Pretty, there's pretty much, you can take any task and find somebody who enjoys it. So, for instance, I have done a few jobs where, like, I've, it's just like a you know, I get paid $50 for like a few hours of work or whatever. And like, you know, in a specific circumstance and like, it's just menial labor, but I still enjoyed it because it was exercise. It was, there was an aspect of cooperation with other people. And I also got to do it with a friend of mine. So I enjoyed it, even though most people wouldn't enjoy that job. The problem for most people comes when once again, they need to accept uh, jobs that they hate to make ends meet. So, like, you know, Rose is like being, you know, I mean, from what she, or sorry, Kristen, from what she tells me is being like, is having her back broken by this job that she hates because she needs to make money. Whereas, you know, maybe someone else at her 
uh, in her workplace. Maybe one of her coworkers actually enjoys the work. I, so, I, I, I will say for me, I do like my job, but only because I'm in lucky circumstances where I'm behind a locked room. So uh, if I'm not doing, if I got my work done, which I actually didn't today, I can like go onto like YouTube and like, they, or on uh, like Facebook or Twitter and stuff like that. And that's such because when it's not too much for me, I to will do, say the one. The one I, thing I like about my job is that I can basically listen to YouTube while doing my job. I, I got that too. And also another thing that's like I can actually honestly believe not believe there are some people that do enjoy like serving customers or do enjoy like cooking in a fast food restaurant. I'm sure what they don't enjoy is forced to be working for long hours at a time or working the second job to move in order to just to pay the bills if like they could choose to like work only a certain amount of hours to do any one of those jobs and like i'm probably they will love it as well as like all the material conditions are like are satisfied they don't have to like worry about like when's my next meal do i have to pay rent and all that i mean if i didn't have to work for uh almost 50 i mean Especially, like, when, like, the hottest parts of the summer and, like, the winter come along. The winter, it gets really busy, and uh, the hottest parts of summer, people start, like, leaving. Like, people who started their job, like, there's just a really high turnover rate. So, we're understaffed in the summer, where in the winter, we're not understaffed, but we're really swamped with work. Uh, so around those times, it starts to become basically like 50 hour work weeks. If I only had to work 20 hours, I probably would like be okay with my job. Like yeah. I actually like whenever my job is like, Oh, do you want to come in for Saturday? I'm like, I, I do usually say yes, because while well, it's a little bit of extra, I mean, it's a little bit of extra cash for the overtime, but also on Saturdays, we don't have a quota to hit, and we're only there for a couple of hours, and it's like, yeah, yeah I'll come in and do, so and do stuff for a couple of hours, but like, you know, being there 10 hours a day, five days a week, coming in there, it, it you know, you start to get, your back starts to get sore, your legs feel like jello. It, you're just like hurting all the time. Mm. And I mean, that's pretty much the case with everybody who works at my job. Even some people who are like, oh, I love the job. Where really they say they love the job because they've, uh, they're have they making enough money for the most part. Or in some cases, they've been to prison and they know what worse labor conditions are like. Yep, there's always that. Modern day slavery in prison. Oh, yes. But yeah, I've basically gotten the like, oh, the problem is, is that I look at it in a negative light, which isn't really the issue. Where the issue that I'm making is the fact that we're literally carrying the company on our backs and we're not paid enough for it. We're I got accused of being an ad cap once. Why? Uh, some of all the time of free free market anti capitalism get immediately thinks that I'm automatically an ant cap or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I think time banking would be better. I'll have to look into that. All right. I mean, it's uh, starting to get a bit late for me because I do work early hours in the morning and I do have to be at work early tomorrow, so I think I'm going to cut the stream. Anybody have any last thoughts? Uh, I'm good. Join the Libertarian Socialist Caucus of the Libertarian Party. Together oh, we can God. make Libertarian <laughs> Socialists again. Okay, my, 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 thought, my thought is don't do that. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> I, 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 I doubled down on that. Do you have anything to say? Uh, death to capitalism. Dismantle the state. Uh, smash the binary. Uh, the, this, uh, destroy white supremacy. Uh, and smash the control machine. Is and patriarchy. Hell, Satan.
Yeah! And no meat, no milk, no master. No master. See ya.